Michael Coxon, another Sunday, another interview with you, another victory. Wada wada, they call it. Well, boy to boy, wasn't it? Every boy. It was. A tricky day again, it looked, but uh, you made it look quite easy. Oh, it definitely wasn't easy, that's for sure. First beat was really uh, tricky. We just sort of managed to get get clear of the few of the boats we were around. Um, I think it was Pagey and, and, and Marcus, and sort of just led them into Rose Bay and just got a, got a good one out of, up near the top mark and just managed to get Seve. Which was uh, that was nice for us because we we were actually felt pretty quick downwind, so we managed to sort of put a bit of time on him in that first run. Now similar conditions in many ways today to last week, and both days you've been uh, you've been really quick for sure and smart mm. around the track. I guess you'll be saving these settings uh, for the JJ. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah we will. Yeah, we're happy, more than happy. Um, yeah, the boat's going well. Got a good good high mode, and uh, it's just it's just nice. It's just really good talk on the boat, and um, really enjoying it so far. So I hope we can keep it up. And just take us back to that first beat. Things weren't looking that good for you as you came off the start line. The breeze looked like it went a bit left, but you picked your way up through the, that leading group. At what stage of the beat did it come good for you? Well, we we had um, it was a pure blonde. One, I think it was was on our hip, and we just did we did a quick little chip to the right, and then we, we basically got a quick little lefty and a little righty, and just really that two quick little short tacks just got us back up there. And then we um, we happened to then just lead back into Rose Bay, which I think was the move, and we sort of got under that left-hand shift and just sort of bent around their bow. So it, it just played out well. You got to have a bit of luck on your side. Yeah, it was it was a tricky day for sure. Yeah. Now you mentioned uh, last week that uh, a lot of rig developments going on, and you're hoping that maybe the developments are in the in the wrong direction. Mm. Today, maybe uh, what you said might be coming true. Well, <laughs> who knows? I mean, it was hard to tell uphill, um, but definitely we felt we felt fast downwind. Just I, I assume that's you know our bot crew weight's quite a bit less than. Than a few of the guys, and definitely less than last year. Dave's replacing Linksy. Linksy's got a good 15 kilos on him, so I think downwind uh, in that light to moderate, um, we're feeling pretty good. And, and uphill, I mean, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, we were in and out all day. I think, um, I think obviously when the, there's a bit more breeze, it'll be a different story. But yeah, we're happy with how it is at the moment. Well, you can't say better than two wins where no one gets ahead of you at any mark. Mark uh, Clark congratulations, great day. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'd like to. Yeah, thanks to the boys. They did a really, really, really good job, Dave and Trent. Thank thanks. And thanks to our thanks to our sponsor too. They're always down here every week. Thurlow Fisher, give them a little plug. Okay, we're here at the Rose Bay Turn Mark for the first time, and boy, oh boy, Michael Coxon has come out of the clouds here. Got to love it, Mark. Didn't he? he had a really tearaway lead halfway up this beat, and Coco has got his nose in front here. Yeah, we said we're saying before Coco sailed beautifully last weekend. Well, they're doing the same again. They didn't uh, start on the right place. The line, went, the start went very left bias just before the gun. Sevi and his guys read that well and made a big gain. Uh, Coco was a good hundred metres plus behind, but he's closed it all up, played the shifts nicely, stayed in the pressure. That's been the key to this beat. And Sevi will be looking over his shoulder, thinking, "Where the hell did, did he, he come, come from?" from? <laughs> Seaplane has got a bit of trouble on the runway. I don't think he'll get clearance from air traffic control to take off there. He's got. 18 foot skiffs coming from all angles. You do a terrible job to some spinnakers and uh, Oof, to get the crew, they go he's, overboard. He's trying to cross the bow of Smeg. Oh, man. He's got about 500 horsepower to help him. And whoa. <laughs> what about the wind? What about the wind on Smeg now? How does he get on with the prop, well, prop as, wash? As they say, There's Bob, the prop wash. You don't see that every day. <laughs> you can see also Sevi quite likes a little bit of heel. Oh, what about oh, watch, out, watch out for that boy. Sevi likes a bit of heel on the boat. You can see every time they come upright, he's actually getting Scott to slightly lean in. That's all to do with uh, balance on the rudder, and it's just the way he likes to sail. So this is another nice little obstacle, the James Craig. For some reason, he's decided to go and watch the Arlington Skip Race, and now he's become a serious bounce, uh, bouncing ball. So Coco can't go through it, so he's jibed off it. Uh, gotta love it, as going to try and take the sterns. Asko, can he get around? He'd love to. Oof, that's going to be a, an awful... Yeah, he's just going to about to bounce the boy the right side, hopefully. Yeah, just about. So he will get round. He'll be pretty slow, but he'll manage to... He doesn't to want to chill. take it with him. Careful, watch out for your rudder there. Oh, watch he's out got for your it. Rudder. You've he's got the got... rudder. That is not a rounding. That is definitely oh, a foul, man. and he's popped off the back of it. So, uh, I mean, if you're allowed to bounce the boy, I think, uh, Bob, but you're not allowed yeah, to tow it, remove, are you? You can't, you can't remove you it. You can't tow it to a new, a new location. <laughs> So uh, anyway, Ask will have to have a chat with the rules advisors after this race.